Hi, Jean. Hi, Harold. How are you? Oh, good. It's great to have you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for, for joining us. Um, we are here to have Mami online, uh, but while we're waiting for her, we'll, we'll still go ahead. Perfect. So, uh, Jean, you have all the honor to tell us exactly what you are about and a bit of networking. So tell us about yourself. Okay, perfect. And I think mom is just coming on right now. Um, fantastic. So uh, greetings to everybody. So my name is Gina Evans, and I am streaming live to you today from the Emerald Isle, also known as Ireland. So quite a bit away from you all this evening. And I'm delighted to be here. So Harold reached out to me because he had started following some of my Instagram posts, and we just connected. And Part of the value of networking that was a little bit of online connecting and online networking that got us here this evening mm -hmm. um, so i suppose just a little bit of background um, i spent 22 years in corporate i used to work for the irish tourist board i traveled globally i was a professional conference organizer and when i was on maternity leave with my third child i was made redundant which for all of you moms out there will know that that is really pleasant because I had two other toddlers running out around. I was breastfeeding my third child. And then they said, you've no job and you've no money. And I went, fantastic. Thank you very much for that. So I went and I worked with my other half who has a business for a while. And I did that for about two and a half years. But I had this realization that when I was within my corporate world, I was traveling, I was very well networked. But when I stepped out of it, I didn't know anybody. And I didn't know me very well. And that was a huge realization for me. So I started my networking journey and I joined lots of local networks, business networks, referral networks, chambers, all sorts of different ones, female networks for women in business. And I, re I literally networked my socks off and I learned an awful lot. And what I was saying to Harold before we went live is that people would have seen me before and I could get up and do a presentation in front of a thousand people and think, oh, you must be so confident and all of this. And I was going, you know, I was able to deliver the content and do the presentation, no problem, but it wasn't about me. But what I realized with networking was that it's extremely vulnerable because you have to know you and I didn't know myself well enough. And after about three years of doing it, I realized that I was way more confident than the woman who would have stood up on a stage in front of a thousand people a few years prior because I'd had to become far more self-aware and I'd really went on this journey and I'll also preface it for, for anybody who thinks that they can't network I am also um, what's called a shy introvert so I, I suffer with social anxiety and I'm also an introvert so I actually like to spend a lot of time on my own or in, you know having dinner or whatever but it's small groups of people but if you ask me to go to a party I'd actually rather cut off my right arm because it's just not my thing I would prefer to be or in small groups so networking so I, I sort of term I sort of jokingly talk about myself as the anti-networker because literally for my personality type I'm not supposed to be good at networking but it's something I've worked very hard at. And within that journey, what I realized is networking is a skill and we can all learn to do it. So even if you're shy, you can do it. And even if you're an introvert, you can do it. You can also get shy extroverts. And if you're a shy extrovert, you can do it. Because the thing is, you can learn these skills. And the more you get out there and do it, the better you get, the better you learn about yourself, your triggers, you raise your consciousness. Um, so I just became fascinated with the topic of networking and I started a blog on it then last year, which I didn't tell anybody about, but it was really in response to watching people struggle with networking um, struggling with going online onto Zoom, sort of saying, you know, the pandemic was only going to be two weeks. I'm sure we'd be back online or back in doing face to face meetings. And we weren't. And a lot of men in particular stopped doing the networking because they wanted to go back to face to face. But more women got involved in the online networking and there was loads of things changing. So I just thought I'd like to start writing about it. And that led me into writing about networks because I realized when people start businesses, 
people say, well, where do I go to network? And there's nobody responding to that. So I wanted to start writing about network. So that's one of the things that I do is showcase. I try to showcase new blogs on my network, uh, new networks on my blog each week and then write about tips and ideas and just when I hear people saying things, it just sparks something in me. Um, okay, let me answer that. You know, if they've asked that question, let me answer it through my blog and help people. Um, and then next year, I am looking at launching my own business network um, to, to bring people together. Because what I realized is I've always loved talking to people and love getting to know people. So what I want to do is offer a platform where I can actually actively connect them for business um, and do it the way I see it and I would you know do it in the fashion that I would like it to be done and um, because there's lots of different networks out there and there's you know it's what we say horses for courses so I want to do something with with my vision so that's that's where I'm at at the moment oh pretty interesting um we seem to have mommy mommy let's hear from you tell us who you are what you do and we'll, we'll start with everything <laughs> Hi everybody, so good evening or, Hi. or afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from. Uh, I'll just first of all like to thank you, Harold, for this amazing opportunity to be a panelist for Networking One-on-One. -on -one. Uh, it's been amazing. I actually went back to see some of the sessions that you guys have already had. And I was just like, is he sure he wants me to be here? Because you had some top guns um, on your show. So great work and keep up the good work as well. And I'm, I'm very honored. <laughs> I'm very honored to have such an ingenious woman like John Evans. <clears throat> here with me as my fellow panelists. Thank you so much. I was literally scrolling through your social media and I'm just like, Harold, are you, are you, are you sure about this? Because these people are well experienced. Oh, Jean, but... Jean is a cup gun, trust me. She is a, <laughs> she's a good one. So very well. uh, I'm, I'm very humbled to be mm. here. So just a brief introduction of who this woman is. My mm. name is Mama Dahir, Ghanaian born. I always say I'm pro-Ghana, um, born in Ghana, came to Canada some couple of, you know, well, over a couple of decades ago. And my, my current work as a policy analyst with the government of Canada has been shaped by networking. I think networking plays a very important and expedient role in my life. Um, although I'm an extrovert, some people think that networking necessarily means you have to be an extrovert. No, you could be an extrovert and still not be good at networking. Networking has to do with relationship building, skills, how to speak, how to um, pull, um, you know, interact with people politely. I have had a ton. And one thing we want to bear in mind is that, you know, and I, I hope I don't go on a tangent with this and go into details because we're going to talk about it. And I would talk in details about the importance of being mindful when you are networking in text. Because the text you send to someone could be read differently. To you, you might think, oh, I'm networking, but to that person, they might think you're screaming at them. So I'll get into details about all that. But um, back into my background, I have a master's in public health, um, which I acquired from the University of Toronto. And I also did a collaborative specialization in health services and policy research, as well as global health. Currently, my work as a policy analyst is with the Public Health Agency of Canada, where I specifically work with the Mental Health for Black Canadians initiative. And my work is centered on how we improve the lives of Black Canadians and also um, ensure that their overall being is being catered for. On the side, I run my own not-for-profit organization, which is called the Power of Love Foundation Canada. And what we do is we're mainly focused on providing black women and girls with services and resources that will shape your life and improve your well-being. Um, within this not-for-profit organization, we actually have a program called Transitions. And Transitions ideally is a it's an employment-based program that helps people to learn skills, knowledge, um, skill building, to mention but a few, such as networking, that will help them to transition into their career pathways and also enter the labor market. So with this program, I've been able to you know, support many young people, many young girls, 
um, with how to network, with resume building, with knowing what your contract says. Because sometimes we get a job and we're all excited, but have you read the contract? Have you read the fine lines? Have you actually read how much you're going to get paid? The fact that your salary says you're going to earn $20,000 a year might not necessarily mean you will earn $20,000 a year. So make the many nitty gritty and nuances within um, secure employment. That's where I have managed to be. On the side, when I'm bored, I like to make resumes. I know some people are like, are you, are you, are you okay? Yeah. Now I've kind of, I don't do it as much, but at first I used to um, help my friends make resumes. They send me your resume. I shape it up and send it back to them. To God be the glory. I can say that for ever since I started working, which was at the age of 18, I've been able to support over 20 people land jobs in different industries. In fact, wherever I find myself in, whatever job or career I find myself in or company I find myself in, I ensure that somebody I know also gets a job there. Whether that be it, I've, I've worked in, uh, I used to work for a uniform store where they used to make fun of me that I brought my whole family to the workplace. You know, so through networking, it has really helped me to not only develop myself, but mostly impact those that are around me. And that's what I, I would say, that's my purpose and that's what I live for. So I hope I've not gone off a tangent but I've been able to describe myself um, succinctly. Thank you very much. I think Harry, Rather, I'll just send you. No, go ahead, Jean. No, I was just going to say. I think you uh, you inadvertently uh, did something that you got an introvert and an extrovert <laughs> on the call tonight to discuss networking. So you're literally going to get a 50-50 point of view on how exactly the best of both worlds. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Okay, so. Um, Listen to both of you. What is networking? Succinctly, what is networking? Is it just a glorified um, term for going out and having parties and meeting people? No, absolutely not. So um, as the introvert, I'm going to answer that one first. So going out to parties or going into co a room with, you know, a cocktail party or anything like that, that is up there with one of my bigger nightmares. It's, it's something I've had to do an awful lot because I used to have, to, I was traveling the world. I was doing a lot of trade shows and exhibitions and there was a lot of cocktail parties, but the level of social anxiety that I would felt before um, going to, into those occasions. So the tip there is, the, the tip for, I'm gonna give you a few tips as well as we go through these things from my perspective, maybe Mammy will do the same thing from her perspective, because I think there'll be different learnings from it. But if you're going to a cocktail party or a big event or something like that, the first thing I would say is eat before you go. So you're not having to get distracted or holding food or trying to shake somebody's hand or anything like that, that distracts you. Arrive early, arrive early. And the reason I say this is that if you're arriving early, and you're smiling and remember to smile because smiling relaxes your face, it relaxes your shoulders and makes your body language more open. And if you are there early, you become the welcoming party and you can act like the host. And when you act like the host and you're smiling, people will gravitate towards you and the conversation will automatically strike up. The thing to know is that most people hate walking into those rooms. So if you can be that friendly face that, that greets them and you act like the host, you stop thinking about you and you focus on the other person and be, become that welcoming party. That makes it a lot easier. So that's just something sort of small at the start um, that, that I would certainly uh, suggest from a party point of view. How about you, Mammy? What would you say? I think, Jane, you've hit the nail on the head. And, and I'll just like to add to that as well. In my perspective, networking is communication. What is communication? Communication is your writing, verbal or oral. So networking can either be done by you going to somebody, speaking to them face to face, or it could be done in a written form. Now encapsulated in networking are different facets. And, and I think we're gonna go in details into that. But ideally in my perspective, networking is your ability to communicate your need effectively. And I'll repeat that once again. Networking is the ability to communicate your need effectively. If let's say I meet Eugene and I wanna speak with you, there's definitely a need or a gap. Um, 
whether it be that need is just getting to know you or wanting to be friends with you, that's still a need. So I think one of the first things, even when networking to identify is what is my need? What do I want from this person that I'm, I'm, I want to reach out to or communicate with? A lot of people will tell you that when you, you reach out to them to either be your mentor, to either job search, you want a position, the first thing they wanna see is what do you want? What do you want from me? And sometimes we forget that this is very key because we are shy to let people know that it's okay to clearly state that this is the reason why I'm networking with you and it's okay to go straight to the point. So just so I don't go into details because I know we're gonna talk and elaborate more on it. Once again, in my perspective, um, networking is your ability to communicate your need effectively. I think I, I'm gonna add on that as well. So. My, my, my first response to what is networking is it's about building and nurturing relationships because you've got so the, the networking is predicated on three things and it's know, like and trust. You've got to get to know people and within that then you know whether you like them and when you know you like them you trust them because you know their why and what makes them tick and all of that because if you don't trust somebody you're not going to refer them in or want to help them. So the starting point of all networking is building and nurturing relationships with people. So you get to know them, you spend time getting to know them, you know that you like them and you know their purpose, their why, their aspirations, their dreams, what they're in business to do, how can you help them? And I think th there's a couple of things that I would sort of bring into that within, within networking two two things or a few things i would say is that networking is like compound interest on a pension it only works with time you've got to give it time it's not a quick win it is about building and nurturing those relationships a lot of people when they start at networking think it's all about sales and it's absolutely not sales may be an end game if you're in business but it's absolutely not the be all and end all of, of networking. And within that, when people go in and they want a quick result, they want to get a sale, they make an awful lot of assumptions. And what I would say is do not make assumptions. So I'll give you a, sort of an example of this. So a few years ago, I was working in my, my partner's company and he has a business in managed print services, so printers and technology uh, document management solutions. And sometimes I would go out networking and some people looked at me and went, well, I don't need a printer, therefore I don't need to talk to you and I don't need to know anybody who needs a printer. And I'm going, well, I'm not defined by a printer. That happens to be something that I'm doing, but that doesn't define me. I've actually got a whole history and a journey of what got me to here. So do not make assumptions about people. And the point of getting to know people is that you're understanding their journey, their chapters, what got them to where they are today. And that's part of the interesting thing about networking is that you're exploring that relationship and that you build on it and you want to see that person succeed. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Um, successfully, you've, you've talked about building and nurturing uh, relationships. You talked about communicating your need. So these two things point to the fact that it has to be purposeful. Now, in our two previous examples, um, we've had our, our speakers actually tell us that you don't just get up and go meet someone begin to talk. There must always be a plan to it. There must be a method to your madness. There must be something you are really aiming to get. And when I hear you guys talking about um, networking is communication, you have to relax, you have to do this, you have to do that. It tells me that immediately, once you enter into a space, there must be a predefined uh, uh, plan. You must make sure you have, um, for one of a better word, some, some KPIs. You don't leave that event or that you don't give that use that leave that opportunity without achieving those KPIs, and that's key. I want to be sure I'm I'm not wrong. So what I would say is, and I think there'll probably be different points of view on this. So, K yes, there should be KPIs and a plan. So if you were going out to say a cocktail event or something like that, um you may be able to get a, a listing of who's going to attend, for example, and you can look through that and sort of say, right, here's a couple of people I would like to meet. 
And a good idea then would be to get in contact with the organizer and say, listen, would you be able to introduce me to these people so I can have a conversation with them? So you can be strategic about how you do it. That also helps you manage your energy and make sure you meet your KPIs. But one of the things that a lot of introverts would struggle with when it comes to networking is that they think they have to go out and meet loads and loads of people, which is going to burn their energy and they're going to come away disenfranchised. So what I would always say to introverts, if you're going to, say, a cocktail event or um, a party, you know, or you're at a trade show or something like that, aim to meet two or three people where you have really strong and deep conversations. And this is something where introverts excel at. They're really good at having deeper conversations with people. Um, and they, you don't need to have lots of conversations. So you can be strategic about figuring out who you need to meet and who you want to talk to, but focus on meeting and having meaningful conversations with less people because then you will have success and you will build yourself up for success. Interesting. Interesting. Mami, what, what, what's your take on that? You're, you're muted there, Mami. Sorry about that. In my perspective, at least, um, and I would say the way I have done networking and it's worked for me and, and for other people that I've shared this with. Networking, okay, and let me let me put it this way. Networking, like Jean said, is like relationships. So if networking is a relationship building, we understand that not all relationships are long-term. Some might be short-term, some might be mid-term, and others might be long-term. I realize that sometimes when people network with me and they need something, they always feel like they have to drag it. I'm like, no. And, and I think everyone is different. You can just, for me, I'll rather you come to me and just say, hello, mommy, my name is ABCD. Um, I know that you're a policy analyst. I would like you to link me with somebody in your field and so on. Um, then beating around the bush and then one week comes, two weeks comes, three weeks comes and it's like, you're still not getting, we're, we're not getting to your goal and your purpose. At least that's me. So I think, and the way I've done it in my perspective is I meet someone I want to network with. I, I immediately state what my need is. After that, I continue of building my relationship with the person. So I'll give you a perfect example of something I did not too long ago. So I'm, I know most of you are familiar with this man. He's the CEO of Stambik Bank Ghana, um, Mr. Kwame Nassimini. We needed Mr. Kwame Nassimini to come on our clubhouse room. And for those of you who might not know, I'm a founder of a clubhouse, a club on clubhouse called Fanti United. And we wanted Mr. Sumini to come and speak to us about his experience about being a CEO. We, as we all know, CEOs are very busy. They have no time. They do not respond to messages. They do not respond to emails. They are very focused. So I said, what is my plan of strategically, and the word is strategic, you have to be very strategic in networking. What is my plan of strategically getting such a busy man like Mr. Sumini to come on a show like Fancy United? And the gap there was a network. So. I met him, I actually had, I was fortunate enough to meet him on a program, um, which was virtual. So meaning that not all networks has to be done face to face. Mr. Sumini is in Ghana, I'm in Canada. I'm, I saw him at a program. Right after the program, I shot him a message on LinkedIn and I said, I would love to communicate with you. I would love to connect further. Um, I have a club on Clubhouse called Fonte United and we would love to have you to come on our session. I went straight to the point he so, said- So you hadn't met him before, you hadn't, uh, you didn't know him everywhere. I don't know him from Adam. Okay. <laughs> I, I went on LinkedIn and LinkedIn is literally your best friend. For those of you who want to learn how to effectively network, LinkedIn is the, the, the LinkedIn literally just gives it to you. The reason why I say that is, LinkedIn is a professional space. So the moment you connect with someone on LinkedIn, they know it's not for, uh, a love affair. Friendly. They know you're not there to waste your time. They know you mean business. So it's important to leverage your LinkedIn page 
to network as well. So moving forward with my story, I just sent him a message on LinkedIn and I said, Mr. Kwame Mini, I met you at ABCD show. You were great. I would love to have you on Fanti United. And he immediately responded. I was shocked to a point I said, is someone using a fake account of him? Because I don't get it. He immediately responded. Um, and he gave me some dates that he was available. He came on our show. We had a great, amazing time. A lot of people will tell you that attended. We had an amazing time. Now, here is where I'm going to come in with the whole concept of networking. I didn't necessarily have to build a relationship with Mr. Asimani, who's a CEO, to bring him in or to ask for a need. Most of these people are busy they're very busy so they prefer that you just go straight to the point and you tell them what they want they are not here for relationship building with you they want you to go straight to the point so i did that i shot my shot which is now the term i did i did a shoot your shot i shot my shot at him he accepted but then i realized that there's something important when someone does good for you you don't just say oh because you've done good for me that's it my networking is done after he came on our show, this is where I'm now building a relationship with him because I know it, go, it, it, it just goes beyond him coming on Clubhouse. So now because he knows me, he's familiar with me, he's comfortable with me, I could literally pick up the phone and call Mr. Sumini, Mr. Sumini, how are you? And I did that yesterday. How are you? Hope everything is good. And they're more trusting. So for me, in my perspective, I would just say, like you said, have your KPIs, go straight to the point. After that, it's always courteous to go back to say thank you and keep them in your in your network folder where you know once in a while you're checking on them, you 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 build a relationship with them. And I think that goes a, a very long way. I hope that helps. Very much. So Jean, uh, and Mami took us to our next um, question uh, or our next uh, topic. You know, beyond the first meet, beyond the first encounter, before beyond um, getting it right the first time. How do you maintain it? What is the next, what are the next steps moving forward? How do you keep it going? Uh, in your, your line of um, uh, expertise, what is one of the ways that's effective? So what I would always say, and I think um, I, I agree with Mame, and I think there's a couple of things that s struck me. I think culture and the way business is done has an impact on how you do things. So in Ireland, for example, that super direct approach mightn't work because it culturally it's different. So in Ireland, people do business with people that they know. And so there, there's very much, it's very much based on a business relationship and knowing the person. So I think culture can play an impact on this in terms of the speed and how things can be done. And um, so that's something to be aware of as well. I would 100% agree around LinkedIn. So in terms of you've met the person, whether you're at an event, um, you might take a business card. So for example, when we do get back out to face-to-face -face meetings and you might get a business card from some, somebody, my first thing is I will always write where I met them and maybe some of the topics of conversation I had with the person gives, it gives me an aid memoir. I would then always go and I would 100% agree in LinkedIn, it's your best friend when you want to um, connect and continue those relationships. Because Here's the thing, you might be employed today, you might have your business uh, today, something might happen that might change in the future. But the one thing that's portable is your LinkedIn profile, everything you have, all of your contacts, the network that you build, you own. And you bring that with you. So LinkedIn is your it, make it your best friend. If it isn't, make sure it gets to be your best friend. So I would always connect with people. I would personalize the invite that I send them to say, hey, look, you know, lovely to meet you. I met you at XYZ event. Would love to connect. Would love to continue the conversation. From a business perspective, what I would always, always, always say to people is organize a one-to-one -one so you can get to know them. So a one-to-one -one is where you might spend an hour or so learning about each other and I would do a few of those a week around with different business people from my networks and my communities and I get to know them I'm either catching up or I'm getting to know them for the first time they get to know me I get to know them so now I have what, what I call a digital Rolodex and I do that consistently and I'm very disciplined about that because that's the only way I know whether I know like and trust them that I'm building up that relationship and if I meet somebody and you know say for example i i know 100 um 
a hundred web developers as an example, how do I know, and somebody comes up to me and says, I'm looking for a web developer, how do I know which is the right one to refer in? I can only do it when I know the people and I understand why there's a, why there's a good fit and a vibe between different people but for experience or background or gender, or whatever, whatever the filters might be. But what I would always say, when, when you're referring somebody in to a business or you're referring somebody on, it, this is critically, critically important and why one-to-ones are so important. It's your reputation that's at stake. So at the start of networking, one of the first things, I'm developing a course on networking at the moment, and one of the first things I would say, it's really important to understand you. It's really under, important to understand your beliefs, your values, your goals in life, what your mission is, what you stand for. And because if you don't understand that, you're not going to understand how people fit into your network and whether they align with you or not. And if you want to refer people in, this is where you need to spend time getting to know them because when you do refer them in, if they let you down or they didn't show up or didn't do the job, that reflects badly on you. So this is where, in terms of going back to Harold's question, in terms of getting to know people, it's doing the one-to-ones, it's connecting on LinkedIn, it's continuing that relationship. I would also then, you know, and on LinkedIn, you want to be engaging with content, you want to be commenting, posting, sharing, you know, and if they're on other social media channels, look at the other social media channels and start following them as well. And the reason I would say that is that if you're going to an event and you meet somebody, if you've looked at their social media profile and looked at some of their conversation topics, it gives you something to talk about because you've suddenly found out what they're interested in, what they've been doing, if they've been traveling, if they're at a conference or, you know, it gives you conversation points. It gives you a starting point and you've an educated starting point. So it makes it much easier um, when, when you want to start off that conversation. Very interesting. Now, let me ask a straightforward um, shot. What is not networking? What is not networking? Maybe um, let's have mommy take this and then you take a breather there. <laughs> wow, that's a straight bullet question. Very much. Um, wow. What is not networking? I wish I could. Okay. Networking. <laughs> I'm going to see something that might sound weird, but I mean, I see this a lot as I'm seeing it. Networking is not dating. Okay. Mm. A lot of people, want, if you want to date her, just tell her you want to date her. Stop trying to use networking as an excuse because I, a lot of people do this on LinkedIn. No, but nothing yeah. stops me from, you know, blurring the lines a bit, you know, she's, she's nice, I there's like to do business and then wrong. have the best of those routes, you know. There's nothing wrong, Harold. However, I think in the, the, it needs to be clarified and there needs to be a straight cut. Um, and we are, we're talking about purpose again. A lot of women will tell you that when they get messages on LinkedIn, Half of the time, the men are not networking with you. They're just shooting their shot at you. Yeah, Some of them will tell you, I don't know if, if Jean has experienced that. I, the messages I get on LinkedIn blew my mind. It's, you'll be shocked. The messages you get in your Not inbox. Facebook, not WhatsApp, not No, no, else. no, LinkedIn. And you know You're the funny me. thing is, because now people are getting to know that if I message you on Facebook, you might not respond. If I message you on Instagram, you might not respond. By LinkedIn, you might think I'm coming to speak to you professionally, but no, I'm just trying to come in, shoot my shot at you. So it's it's been very difficult for a lot of women. And I've seen a ton of posts on, on, on LinkedIn where women literally complain that, you know what, guys, this is not it. I've seen women screenshot their inbox um, and put it literally on, on LinkedIn and you will be shocked at some of the things these men say. And I'm just like, when did LinkedIn become Tinder? You know, <laughs> where people will be commenting on a woman's, you know, her body parts. So I think it's, it's very important that we bear that in mind. And that's why I'm big on going straight to the point. Um, it really, really helps. 
Another thing to that, networking is not using, maybe I wanna scratch the, the beginning of, the, of your question a bit, but, and, and just frame this up a bit. Don't come in with the intention that you're gonna use the person, because we know when you're gonna use them when you're gonna use us, I would say, I'll use me as an example. If you're coming and I know that this person just is here to use me, I can, it's easy to detect. And that's why I believe that even Jane made a very, um, she thoroughly described the importance of post networking, how mm. to continue building that relationship with someone. It's very important because the moment you come network with somebody, you get what you want and then it's like, you don't care about the person anymore, it hurts. And it blocks the opportunity for that next person. So I, I strongly believe that, you know, once again, going straight to the point, not using, I mean, whilst you're networking, if you feel that this person is somebody that I love, then that's that's something different. But we need to be very mindful of our approach when we are going into professional um, networking and bearing in mind that the person is human, just as you are. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to summarize that. That was a tough question though, I can't lie, but if I think of something else, I'll add it to it, but thank you. Trust me, you got more coming your way. Jean, take it up, let's go. What, networking for me, so what networking is, so a lot, let, let me put it into, from two perspectives. So a lot of people come into networking uh, or start businesses and they're told, right, you need to get out networking. And they go, well, I, I to do my sales and I have to do my marketing and I have to do this and I have to do that. I don't have time to network. And what I would say is that networking is sales and marketing. It absolutely is sales and marketing because you're building your personal brand and your business brand and you're building up those relationships. So networking is your sales and marketing time. It's not all of it. You, you know, marketing is integrated, sales is integrated. So you're going to do your online stuff and your website and social media and direct mail campaigns and whatever else you're doing. But networking is very much a part of your sales and marketing strategy. But what networking is not and back to what I said, that it is building relationships, networking is not about selling. It's not about going into a room and saying, here's my product, will you buy it from me? Networking is absolutely 100% not about selling. It is about building relationships and building trusted relationships and being in that place. You know, they, they say that it's visibility, credibility equals profitability. And I'll, I'll break that down. And can, you, can you go over that again? Let me take it down. Yeah, sure. Um, visibility, credibility. So visibility plus credibility equals profitability. So networking, whether it's online or in person, allows you to become visible. The How you engage and show up consistently within networks allows you to become credible. And LinkedIn and other social media platforms, they allow you to build up your credibility. So you become a subject matter expert and that leads to profitability. But for me, profitability might be a job opportunity. It might be a promotion. It might be getting asked to speak at a conference. It might be about getting a new piece of business or a referral partner. Profitability and success it is what it means to every one of us. It's not just necessarily a dollar sign, but you have to be visible. You have to make yourself credible and a subject matter expert and that trusted advisor. And that will all together lead to profitability. But networking is not about selling. Hmm. Very interesting. Mom, you want to add something if I go to the next thing? No, we're good to go. <laughs> okay, so my next shot. Tell me, I'm a guy. I'm sandwiched between two ladies. Um, teach me about networking for guys. How do I go about it? Jean, you can take it away. Oh, um, right. Sorry, what was the question? So teach me about networking for guys. Yeah, for guys. So in relation to definitely ladies. Okay. So I, I suppose it's jumping on to from Mame's point there that it, it is not dating. It's keep it clean, keep it professional. Um, I think what I see, what I see, I, I'm a part of quite a few female only networks as well as what I call gender neutral networks. 
And what I see is for women, a lot of women struggle talking to men. A lot of women struggle getting out and they're going, mm. oh my Lord, the men, they're just going to talk about football. They're just going to talk about golf. They're just going to talk about bloke stuff. And, this, and women are going, I don't want to talk about that stuff. So if you're a man going out to network, what I would say is if you're with other guys and you're talking about football or politics or golf or whatever you're talking about, that's fine. But be aware of who else is in your circle and make sure that your conversation points are inclusive. Because if, if they're exclusive, it, it ostracizes and isolates the women. But the other side of that coin is that women tend to gravitate to quite female topics and it might be family and the kids and stuff like that. So women also need to be mindful that sometimes they need to open up and be more inclusive in their content and their conversation points. So it's being aware of who's there. But I think a lot of women that I come across in, in networks, they certainly when they're starting out, they, they're lacking in confidence and they don't feel that they can talk to men so it's just being aware that men have a role to play in welcoming the women into the groups and having a conversation with them and getting to know them and making them feel welcome and and just be inclusive and do you know what you know, it, uh, you know, uh, okay you go ahead go ahead sorry it's just it's, it's a very basic thing but here's here's the rocket science part of it is be kind and be empathetic if you do those two things you'll never go wrong Okay, so I'm guessing that I, I probably have to do quite a lot of research before I step out or I engage in uh, some conversation that's networking biased. Um, it looks like there's a lot of preparation. I need to know my stuff, know the person or know the people I'm going to meet. I should, I should have some talking points. You know, at any point in time, I, I can sort of you know, pull out from my back pocket and be like, okay, the one is a lady, you can mention this, you can mention that, you can mention that, you know, put it back in. Is, is that how it's supposed to be? It's not, it's not always the case, to be very honest with you. I'll tell you that most of my, and I would speak from an honest point of view. As an most, extrovert. As an extrovert, most of, and even this applies to introverts too. Most of my most amazing networking instances have not really been professional. I am someone I love, I love to joke around a lot. I like to find something common between me and someone. So for example, if I see that Harold has loves, let's say, Wache. And Harold is Jean, someone. Jean, do you know Wache? <laughs> it's rice and peas. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Like like that. <laughs> so if I see that Harold loves Wache, but I've been watching Harold's videos for a long time. And I I kind of want to be on his show. And then one day Harold makes a post about Wache. The way I am and with the way I geeky I like to be, instead of me going to Harold to be like, hey, Harold, um, and, and it applies to everyone. I'm not saying do it for everybody. Um, this is some instances I have done it. I'll be like, oh, wow, I love watching too. This is great. By the way, I love your show, Juxtapose, and I'll love to be on it. So I try to find something that is politely funny and similar between both of us. Um, to be honest, networking does not always have to be super structured. There's two things I always keep in mind for me when I network with people is to be friendly and be as polite as possible. Initially, I had stated that sometimes you can send a text message and to you, you're not screaming. And I know a lot of the guys can be like, yeah, my girlfriend, I remember even when I sent a message and she was angry, she thought I was screaming. And texts can always be misconstrued. So when in doubt, be as kind as possible and very polite when sending a message, especially through LinkedIn, because it could be misconstrued. It could be read differently. Maybe you're, hi, how are you? mine actually let me give you <laughs> so here in north america we like to use the word hey a lot from culturally i know that when you say hey to someone in ghana sometimes it could be um looked at as an insult it could look like if you're disrespecting the person and saying hey so me knowing that and knowing that you know what i don't know how this person might take the hey why don't i just settle for hello hello is universal Everyone knows that hello is a salutation. So I always say that when in doubt, be friendly and be very polite so that your, 
your, your communication is not misconstrued as something else. Um, back to your question, Harold, concerning as a guy, how should you network? Um, I believe that networking has different facets. There's the professional network, and I'm not, if we're talking professionally, was your question in regards to professional networking or just networking in general? Across board. I would say across board. Um, I wanted to say something, but I don't think that's- Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, on the other hand, if it's not really professional, okay, I'll come to the professional side and non-professional side. If it's non-professional and maybe you just wanna have a business partner or perhaps just be in that person's network, because sometimes you're not necessarily networking to um, get a job or, 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 um, or be connected to someone. Sometimes you network just because you wanna be part of that person's network, right? So I see Harold, I'm like, Harold knows a lot of people. Let me get to know him because by being within his network, I can be connect with, connected with other people in his network as well. So if that's the case for me, I, and I'll speak for myself, the way I would want a man to approach me if it's just non-professional and it's the first time and the man is feeling nervous. I feel like we're having like a dating class. Um, women love compliments, love compliments. So you could just go up to her. I like your hair, nice hair you got on. Uh oh, I thought that was a slippery slope. I don't, that's what I said for me, at least. If it's non-professional, that's why I use the word non-professional. Mm -hmm. If it's non-professional and you're messaging me on Instagram, nice hair, nice dress, nice shoes. For me, I don't know about every woman. When it's professional, don't go there. Don't comment on the person's hair. Don't comment on the person's shoes. I think if you're a man and you're going to network with a woman, just go straight to the point. Hey, hello, I saw your LinkedIn page or I saw you at this event. I think you spoke very eloquently focused on the task that the person did as opposed mm. to who the person is so mm. i've had men approach me in my um, linkedin pay, in my linkedin inbox and they said things like um hey mommy um you did very great at this speaking engagement or hey mommy i heard you speaking um on a clubhouse on this topic it was very insightful that way that approach is best so as i said it's just my perspective and with the non-professional side that's how I would want to be approached. Um, professionally. Hold it there. Hold it there. Let me let me let me bring you in. You know this. No problem. Um, Non-professional side. They will get back to the professional. Do you tell know, me my, informal? Man, they brought uh, brought in a good point that I just wanted to pick up on, and it comes down to sort of the the small talk that when it doesn't matter whether it's a woman and a woman or a man and a woman coming together or a man and a man coming together, the the start of the relationship is always based on small talk. And to Mammy's point, it's about small talk is about having that conversation that you start finding common points of interest. And if you're at a similar event, where did you come from? Why, what brought you here? Are you interested in a particular speaker? You are finding common points of interest and the conversation then follows and it becomes easier. But that's what small talk is about. It's trying to find common points of interest. So if you look at it from that point of view if you're in a professional you're at a network or a trade show or something like that that's what you're trying to do and um, it's when you go into say a circle of people and there's lots of people talking it's just to be aware and make sure that the conversation points are inclusive I think that that's sort of combining bo both of our points I want to get to the compliment side really you want to get to the compliment side exactly um, does it fly for you no, not not for me. I think in a professional setting, like I mean, if if I go, no, into we're the, talking purely informal. It, sorry, say that again. We're talking purely informal, so probably you met at a game or a party or something. Yeah, if I was going out to um, an evening event, so it might be a, a soiree or just a, an evening dinner event or something mm. like that, and a, a guy came up and said, "Oh, I love your shoes," whatever, that'd be absolutely fine. Or you're looking great tonight, whatever. I, that wouldn't bother me in the slightest. But if I was, and I, I agree that compliments are always nice, you know, if you're looking good or whatever. But if I was in a professional setting and somebody said something to me, I'd be sort of going, "Okay, maybe not the right platform or not the right time." Um, you might think it, but think it and don't verbalize it. 
So it's about being appropriate. Okay, so Mami, let's get back to the professional side. Yeah, I think in regards to what I had stated earlier, I think professionally just sticking straight to the point and instead of focusing on, on the person, focus on the action that the person did. So I gave examples of me speaking, have been at speaking engagements and people just, you know, using that as a way to network. And for me, it strikes me because I get, I get super excited when I go for speaking engagements and people actually message me on LinkedIn and say, hey, I was on, I, I was in juxtapose and I, I heard you speak and it was great. I, I think it's a great opener because it's always good to hear feedback um, from people. So for me professionally, I would think that would be focused on the action and the context instead of the person. And I think if time goes on, whatever happens can flow from that. But professionally, I would say, um, just stick to the action and the content of what the person did. Okay, thank you. So let's slide into what I call the awkward moment. And now, first and foremost, um, you still give me tips. You, you just spoke about helping guys to network. We'll talk about ladies networking as well. But I want to talk about the awkward moments in a number of uh, points. First and foremost, um, I, I, I meet someone or I message someone. Whatever I'm trying to push across is just not working. I've, I've done everything in the book. I have prayed to God. I've done everything. And I'm not getting a connection. Do I just stop? Do I just quit? Or do I keep pushing? After all, it's, it's quitters never win, I'm told. <laughs> How do I handle this? I can take that on. You see, net, when, when networking, you do not want to seem like you're overburdening the person. It could, it could be very annoying. Um, okay. You have to be mindful of the other person's schedule. One of my favorite messages that I receive on LinkedIn is when people actually acknowledge in their message that I know you're you're busy. I know you have mm -hmm. a tight schedule. However, could you spare me 20 minutes? For me, what that tells me is empathy. The person mm -hmm. recognizes that I'm quite busy. We are all human. We are all busy. We have family. We have career. We have not-for-profit organization. But just the mere fact that the person is stating it emphatically in their message that, listen, I know you're busy, but please, if you could spare me 20 minutes of your time, it would mean a lot to me. I think that stands out. Um, that actually even compels me to want to, to make time for that person. I would also say that in regards to your question, um, if you're, we're all human, we will not connect with everyone. There's always someone that best fits your need. If it doesn't work for person A, that doesn't mean that you're gonna give up and never want to network with anyone. You will just keep going. I have, <laughs> I tell, when I tell people this all the time, they get shocked. I send people messages on LinkedIn and they don't reply. They don't respond to me. Do I get upset? Do I throw a fuss? No, I just keep on going and finding other people that might best fit my need. Personally, just to conclude, I think everything happens for a reason. When you're able to get that person that best fits your need, that's what matters. So that's just mine. So, so rejection is normal. It's, it's not strange. Very normal. I get rejected all the time. I've gotten rejected so many times. Rejection Even is Even at your level? Oh, yes. I recently did a talk and um, uh, I spoke to students, undergrad students and research graduate students on um, the importance of professional development and mental health in securing employment. And before my, my presentation, I did research. And research says that before a person gets a yes for a job, they will get they would have received 24 no's. So you would have to go through almost 24 decision makers to get that yes. So I have that at the back of my mind that listen, I will get rejected irrespective of whatever level I find myself, but I have to persevere and keep going. So I would say that's what has kept me perseverance. I see James Norden. Yeah, 100%. I think 
um, I'm, I'm working with a, a, a mindset coach at the moment and it's something I've been doing for, for a while. And one of the things, one of the learnings out of it is, you know, we all need to have a, a goal and in life and we need to have a destination that we're working towards because that's how we power through and we, it's also how we deal with rejection because what man made point was really important you have to persevere if you know what your end game is you know what your goal is nothing should sway you from that so even when you are rejected and here's the here's another way of looking at rejection if you're at point a and you want to get to point b and you send a request or a message whatever and they don't respond you're not worse off you're still just at point a you're not actually worse off your status quo is the status quo you just haven't got to be yet. So you try again and you get to be. You're not going backwards. You're just staying still. So you can, a lot of people will take rejection and think, oh, I'm going backwards or it means something bad. It doesn't. It just means life is the same. So it's also how about how we reframe things. But if you're, if you've got a goal of what success looks like for your career, for your business, for whatever it might be in your, in your life, that's what you're working towards. And you just haven't found the right person yet. So you keep knocking on doors. Um, and that sort of brings me to a point that, you know, certainly within business, I would always suggest to people there's sort of five key people they need to have in their networks. Um, the, the, there's a couple of things in it, but you need to have your coaches. So whether it's a business and life, you know, we, nobody excels without a coach. You need to have your mentors, find mentors. And a mentor is somebody who knows how to do something that you want to know how to do so you may not know or have that skill today it may be about doing uh, facilitation or getting better at instagram reels or whatever it might be but you find your mentors through your networks then what you want to find are your business besties because when you're in business or if you're in business it can get very lonely so you want to find your business besties and people <clears throat> that you can share your wins with and share your bad days with and people who are just going to listen and just you know no judgment so there are three very, very key people. The fourth person I would always suggest that people connect in with it, or that find within their networks is what I call a connector. So it is somebody who knows a lot of people and somebody who can connect you in to other people and somebody who can introduce you. So once they know um, they know who you're looking for and what, so success looks like or who you need to find they know the people and can connect you in so if you know the connectors the people who know lots of people they're really good people to keep your relationships with because as mommy said you can't you can't keep all the relationships going it's simply mm -hmm. not possible there, there's a number um if anybody's ever come across it there's a, a number called or a man called dunbar and he has a thing called dunbar's number and what that means is that he works out he works out that approximately we can all keep and maintain and nurture approximately 150 relationships in a year so when you're out networking you'll meet a lot more people than that but this is where your your follow-up strategy becomes very key that you are strategic and how who you connect with and have a plan for how you're going to keep those relationships up whether it's through email, whether it's on, you know, if I'm following up with somebody, it's always on LinkedIn. I'll try and follow the social media channels. I'll try and connect with them on email. I'll work out and get a one-to-one -one, and then I might schedule another one-to-one -one in a few months time. So I'm getting another update because you can only do this with so many people in, in any given year and people you need to be keeping relationships within a year um, will change depending on your journey and for your career and your business. But the, the fifth person then, if you are in business, is to refine, to find your referral partners. So a lot of people go into networks and they're looking to find their customers. And you may find customers, but what I would always say to people is if you're in a business and you want to go into business networking, try and find referral partners. And they're the people who talk to your customers before you do. Um, so for example, when I was working in managed print, IT companies were the people I built relationships with because they talked to my customers before I did and they needed a good referral partner. So it meant that I had to keep the best relationships going to get the referrals for the business. So it's about being smart about how you use your networks and who you're building those relationships with. Okay, so, so you mentioned uh, five people to have in your network. 
I got three of them. I got coaches, mentors, and business. Um, do you say besties? Yeah, your your best friend, basically. You're like your business okay. friend. Okay. I just then, wanted to be sure. Yeah, and the fourth one then is a connector. So find the connector, connector. people who know people. And the fifth one then. Are they the same as influencers? Uh, they can be. They can be. Yeah, they can be. And okay. the fifth one is then your referral. What your it can be termed customer source or referral partner. Okay. And all these people I need to maintain active relationships with mm -hmm. for them to be able to play these roles in my life. Yeah. Now tell me, what's the difference between a coach and a mentor? Mm. Okay. So a mentor will typically give you advice and, you know, so you might come with a problem and they'll give you advice and give you guidance based on their experience. A coach typically is somebody who gets you, asks you questions to get you to answer them so that you get very introspective. They ask you questions and you have to pull the answers out of yourself. Um, so what is more talking with you and, and giving you advice? The other is extracting the information out of you. Oh, is it? Interesting. I've always sort of blurred the lines between the two. Now, now I yeah, want to ask you, again. The lines do blur, but the way I look at it is a lot of people, you know, if, if, if you think of the, the, the biggest, you know, if, if you're following sport, whether it's football or tennis or golf, and if you think of all of these elite athletes, they all have coaches and why? Because you can't see what you're good at, what you're not good at. And the only way you mm. keep proving is if you have somebody who challenges you and that's what part of what a coach does so it can be a life coach or a business coach but if you want to move on you've got to have somebody else who's in your corner who can help push you because we, we don't no, nobody excels and succeeds on their own our success is the net result of the relationships that we have and that we bring with us and you know in business they say that we are the sum total of the five people that we're closest to so it's about auditing and looking at who are you closest to, who's influencing you, because we are all the sum total of the five people that are closest to us. Well, I'm learning really. Referral partners, connectors, business besties, mentors, coaches. And these are irrespective of what, who your friends are, what your business circle is, irrespective of um, the industry you find yourself. At least yeah. these five must cut across. Yeah, that would always be okay. Advice. Yeah. The last, the last time, um, our last two editions, I, I coined something I called level, level zero to seven. Um, I want to explain that, but before I, I do that, I want to uh, thank all our guests for joining in and hanging in with us. Uh, if you have questions, you'd want to. Um, you know, raise your hand out. I'll, I'll point you out that you can ask a question. Um, anything around networking or anything specifically to any of our speakers. Thank you. So, um, again, level zero for me is what I call not knowing the person at all, having met, not met them before, or just there's no connection. And level seven is that connection where I can actually call them at midnight and they'll be like, Hi, Harold, how can I help you? You know, we've broken that. That's like the highest level where you've broken all, you know, barriers of formality and all that. And the question I keep asking is, how do I move from with coaches, mentors, business besties, probably those ones are your friends, so you know them, connectors, uh, referral partners. How do I grow from the zero all the way to the seven? Um, I've got to clarify one thing. So your business bestie, it's not necessarily a personal friendship, but you know, because you would have your mm. friends outside. But it's somebody who's in, you know, if you're in business, it's somebody who is also in business, who understands what you're going through. That's your business bestie. So it's a business bestie, somebody in business who is a peer and who gets what you're going through. So if you're a startup, they've been there or they can share insights or they're scaling their business and they're they're at that level. And they can share insights or they're in a particular industry and they can share what's going on in that industry and they get it the highs and lows of it. So it's that person who can listen to you and support you in your wins or on when things are tough. That's your business bestie. So it's not just about a personal friendship. It's about somebody who gets you on a professional level. But um, back down to the back to the relationship side of things. 
this is where, you know, back down to what I said at the start, um, networking is like compound interest on your pension. It only works with time. It works where you're depositing a little bit of money, you leave it in the bank or you leave it in a savings account or you invest it. And with a little bit of interest, it keeps growing and you just leave it be and it has a compound factor. And that's the way networking works. It's where you have got to invest in the relationship. So you meet the person, it might be online, it might be um, at an event, you connect with them, you agree to, you, you organize to meet them on Zoom. So you have a, a Zoom coffee with them. You might want to meet up in person if you know things are opening up to the pandemic, you might want to meet them for a cup of coffee and you're finding out about them, they're finding out about you. If you're, in, if you're in a referral or a business network, it's very likely that you're going to be meeting them every week. So you're learning about them every week and you're connecting every week with them. So it's where that consistency that shows the reliability and bit by bit, you're getting to know them more and more. You know, so when, you know, for example, when I'm, I, I chair different networks in, in Ireland for chambers. And one of the things I would always say to our groups is the power of one, you know, if you can do more than one to one in a week, great, but do at least one to one. I sit down, have a coffee in, in person or on Zoom, have a coffee for an hour with somebody out of the group every single week, because bit by bit, you are getting to know them and you build on that every time you meet them because you're learning a bit more about their business mm -hmm. or you're learning a bit more about what the matters and the, who they're looking to speak to. And the more you learn about them, the more you can help them. And I think that's the, the way I would look at networking as well. You know, Harold asked a question, you know, how can I help you? And I think that's a really important question to ask, but it's also about how you frame your mindset that when you're talking to people, building relationships, you're thinking, I'm going to actively listen to them because I want to learn more about them because I want to learn how I can help them. And helping them isn't necessarily just for today. It might be for tomorrow. It might be for a year or two years because sometimes you don't know how to help people. But if you like them, and you want to see them succeed, you'll be on the watch out and you'll be listening going, how can I help them? I'm not sure, but let me uh, keep them top of mind. And you keep at that and it's that consistency. And I think if you were to put it, you know, going up on your zero to seven, discipline, networking requires a lot of discipline in business. It absolutely requires discipline and it requires consistency. Now, um, let me ask this question about etiquette, networking etiquette. Um, when am I crossing, where, where do I draw lines? Where do I know I'm crossing certain boundaries I'm not supposed to cross, um, especially even online? So for example, I've taken networking series, having listened to this show, um, I've, I've taken pointers to identify who my five people in my networks are sorry my, my five categories of people in my network um i have i've decided to take it on as a serious subject in my life to move me forward how do i draw boundaries how do i ensure i'm not you know crossing the line um becoming a nuisance or be taken for granted hmm. So this is where, so the taking for granted bit, I think this is where you're building up the relationship. So back down to know, like, and trust. So you're at the start, you're building up a relationship and you're getting to know the person. That's where you're building, nurturing, and, and you're, yeah, you're building and nurturing that relationship. I think the boundaries come in listening to the person where they're at. So if I'm meeting somebody, uh, you know, if I'm in my network, if I'm meeting them every week, I'll organize a one-to-one -one and then I'll say, okay, let's organize, you know, I'll see them every week at the networking meeting, but I'll say, let's do another one-to-one -one in about three months time, because that allows me the opportunity to say, listen, we'll schedule it in the diary. I'll have stuff to share, new stuff to share with them. And they'll have new stuff to share with me about how life has developed or business has developed. Um, so I think you just need to, to pace yourself and be patient. I think 
I, the boundaries I think are very much specific to the people and their circumstance but I think patience is something that is key being consistent is key I think as well when when you're in networking another sort of trait you know I talk about consistency and discipline and that side of things but doing what you say you're going to do is really, really key. So I would always say with the networking that everybody should be networking every week. It should be an absolutely a default part of your diary and your week, whether it's for your career or for your business. It will be nuanced as to how and how you're going to do it, if it's career versus business. But it needs to be something you actively do every single week, because that's where the compound factor kicks in. And the more relationships you start building up and you can only build so many relationships at a time but if you're doing it every week and you're trying to meet new people one or one or two new people every week that suddenly builds up and that will have impact over time but if you've said you're going to do something so within networking i would always say to people plan your pre and harold this is back down to what you were saying your prep of maybe having some conversation topics maybe researching who's going to be at the event or if it's at a meeting that you're going to every week, then you know who you're going to be meeting. You don't necessarily need to do, the, to do that part of it, but you're doing your pre, you know what you want to say. So if it's if you're in a business network, for example, and you want to talk about a bit of your product, you might have the opportunity to do an elevator pitch and you're doing 60 seconds on your business or something you're doing. So you want to have that prepped and you have that prepared. You're going to attend your meeting. You're going to actively listen to people and what they're saying. Um, but a huge, huge part of the success of networking is if you've said you're going to do something, that you do it. And that's where your follow up comes in in connecting with people, LinkedIn, your email, social media. But also if you've offered to make an introduction or you've offered to send on a, an interesting article or you've offered to make an introduction, you absolutely do it. And this comes down to your reputation. So I think that is really, really um, important point around networking. You're muted there, Harold. Sorry. So before Mami comes in, let me ask this. Um, should the ultimate goal be to um, move every relationship to an informal, friendly, um, uh, um, certain. I don't know if my question sounds right. So you always, almost always start um, formally, you know, hello, sir, hello, what can we do, and all that. Um, do, should my should my ultimate aim be to, 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 to get to that point where I can say, okay, now I've achieved my aim because now we are so informal, we can easily pick a phone, say hello, how are the kids, etc. You, you you will you will you know if you're meeting somebody every week at a business event or a business network a degree of informality will come in because if you like if we saw each other every week at a business network it'd be hi harold um or we would tend to be quite um informal so hey how's things going and you know how are you how are the kids and you would do what we call shoot the breeze and have that sort of small conversation so you get to that informality um but in terms of the number of relationships, you know, so say, for example, I, I'm president of a, a, a county chapter of a network here in Ireland. And one of the things that I was doing is I would do what I call networking. So I would meet the, you know, I would say to people, hey, if anybody would like to meet up for a one to one with me, we can go for a walk. We live by the by the sea. So we go for a walk by the beach and um, I just get to know them when we just it would be the first time. It'd be very informal. We go for a walk, a bit of exercise. We chat, we get to know each other, have a coffee at the end. And it was just very convivial and nice. And that was that worked for that particular network and that setting. Um, for other networks, it might be a little bit more formal. You might be doing it over lunch, but it, it's very hard to maintain all of those relationships. But this is where you'll start filtering as to who you vibe with and who you connect with and who you feel a connection with as well. And that will start to filter as you go up the, 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 I suppose the pyramid, if you like, the amount of relationships that you're trying to maintain narrows. It's not as many um, because other filters have come in around interest or compatibility or commonality or just people you want to see succeed within, within, your, within your life.
Have we lost Harold? There you are. Apologies, I had some network issues. Hope I didn't miss anything. No, all good, all good. Mammy, what about you? What do you think around the, the boundaries? I think she said most of most of it, I mean, if not all, um, not all networking or networks might lead to something informal. And I think just understanding the relationship you have with a person. And ideally, I think the layman's word, whether you guys buy. Um, there are some network where you just don't vibe. It was just for the purpose of whatever it was. And I think you can move past that. But when you vibe and you realize that, okay, this can ideally go beyond, um, you know, the professional level, then you, I mean, both of you will come to that mutual understanding. Personally, for me, when people have reached out to me via LinkedIn to network with me or need a support, some of them emphatically state that they wish that, you know, this could go um, a step further where it could be more so of a relationship building aspect. So um, I think maybe if you want, you can also make that clear and say something along the lines of, um, I'm happy to have this go, um, to have us maintain this connection and, and see how things can go further with the way we've developed things. So I think it really helps. Okay, so, so eventually that, that should be my ultimate aim for all. I mean, that should be a measure. Exactly. So what I wanted to establish was, uh, should that be a measure for me to know that, hey, I'm, I did well with this particular connection? So you're saying that should, an inf um, if, if I'm understanding your question, if the, if the conversation or network extends to something informal, is that a justification yes. that you did a good job? No, I mean, exactly. that it's, okay. not, it's not a justification. Like I said, everything has its purpose. It could be short-term, mid-term, long-term. Um, the success, <laughs> I would say, and I'm gonna mention it again. To be honest, your first success to networking is that the, the person sure. actually responds to you. Because <laughs> people can choose not to respond when you email them, when you connect with them. So your first step of success is when the person actually responds. That gives the open way or that opens up the gate for you to now keep talking more. Because if you message me wanting to network and I do not respond, that it's already a blockage. I think the other thing that I wanted to add before I, I forget is... One of the key things, and I think, I'm, and I'm not sure we've mentioned it yet. One of the key things that has hindered many people from not wanting to network is, the, is this two letter word, no. People are scared to hear no. They're scared that if I connect with somebody and I wanna network with them, be in their circle of friends, or um, I'm asking them to refer me, or I'm asking them for a coffee chat, they're going to say no. So some people say, you know what? Instead of me getting that no, I will not even bother anyways. What I wanna tell you is that one thing that has really helped me is, I always keep it at the back of my mind, the worst he, can, he or she can tell me is no. That's literally the worst thing they can say to you. If you go, if I go to Gina and I tell Gina, Gina, I would like to have a 20 minute coffee chat with you to learn more about networking, to learn more about your business. The worst thing Gina can tell me is no. So if you take that or you put that at, a, at the back of your mind that the worst thing you will hear is no, it should push you to persevere and say, you know what? If I try, I'll get a yes. If I don't, maybe that connection that could open the gate for me has been blocked. So I would say just go for it. No does not kill anyone. No has never killed anyone. So um, persevere, be determined, prepare your mind that you might hear a no. And when it comes, just move along with it. Great. So the two letter word no. We shouldn't be afraid of no, not at all. No. You know, today I was actually, when I was brainstorming on today's session, I said, fear has killed so many destinies than cancer. A lot of people are so scared to do things. It's not even, I'm sure that the cure of cancer is probably still around, but it's in someone's head. 
because they are scared to to showcase it. So fear is fear is a is a thief of of destinies. And I remember when last year I did a Toastmasters presentation, I said fear has two acronyms. And I hope I can remember these two acronyms. Yes, the first one is forget everything and run or face everything and rise. I, I, have, I have a third one on that and it's false expectations appearing real. Real, exactly. So a lot of the times, and I'm going to tie it back to networking, people feel that, you know, I'm scared. I'm not going to network. Oh my gosh, Harold is this big man. He will never have time to respond to me. Oh, he would never respond to my emails. He would never want to have a coffee chat with me. That alone has blocked you from having access to whatever um, need you want or whatever networking you want to do with this person. So I would say have faith <laughs> that is going to work, connect with people, as long as you're using the right keys and procedures that Jean and I have stated today, you would be absolutely fine. Yeah, I would I would 100 percent agree mm -hmm. with that. I, I think there's there's a really good book um, to follow up on the, the, the point around no. So I, I would do a lot of business reading. And one of the books that I'm finishing up at the moment is a book called um, Success Principles and it's by an author called Jack Canfield. And literally the way he puts it, when you get a no or that rejection you just go next and if you're mentally you know you've got that in your mind to say what is the worst that can happen the worst that can happen is no or nothing and you go next and in your head when when you train your mind and your attitude and your mindset to say next it doesn't seem so bad then because it's not about you it's not personal so you just go next and you knock on the next door whether it's online or for the next connection or the you know the next I'm asking to be introduced to somebody you just go next and suddenly it all becomes a lot easier so I'd highly recommend that book it's really good what's the name of the book again success principles by okay. I'll, I'll put it in the chat as well great 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 okay so um still to our audience if there's any question if there's any point if there's any uh, contribution, please kindly raise your hand out. I'll, I'll call you up and then you can contribute. We are not just having a chat between ourselves, it's all of us. Great. Mami, um, earlier I was talking with Dean about um, etiquette and mm -hmm. how to conduct ourselves, especially online. Now, the online paradigm has really changed stuff a lot. And especially over the past uh, year or two, with this COVID pandemic. Um, we've seen what we call the new normal, et cetera, et cetera. Right. People are gradually now doing much more networking online than in person. What, what, what should we consider when we are doing online network? What are the etiquettes? Where do we draw the lines? Thank you very much for asking that question. And I think it's very important. Um, online etiquette that starts or commences with online presence. One of the key way, or one of the key reasons why someone might not want to even respond to your message is your online presence. How are you portraying yourself online? So let me just use LinkedIn as an example, since most of us love to connect through there. Is your LinkedIn page up to par? Is your profile up to date? Does your um, DP have a picture of you in a selfie or in a bikini as opposed to having a headshot picture? All these things count because for most people, I can guarantee you that before they respond to your message, they go first to check your profile. We have all done this where somebody will inbox us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. And sometimes before we reply, we're like, who's this person? We go and check your page. We check the marks and we're like, okay, they seem like somebody who, who would not come and stress my life. So let me respond to them. So one of the key things is your online presence. It's very important. That's number one etiquette. Once your online presence is checked, the second thing is how you approach people when you're networking with them. Nothing irritates me, and I always say me, more than someone wanting to network and just saying, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you is not a message. And I'll repeat, 
Hi, how are you is not a message. Hi, how are you doing is not a message. It shows lack of professional etiquette. If you're going to approach someone, especially on LinkedIn, it's hi, hope you're doing well. You can even say hi, how are you? But there needs to be some form of context. You don't just say hi, how are you? And then wait for the person to respond. And then you go, I'm fine. Oh, okay, I decided to know. Succinctly state everything you want in your message. Be as direct as possible. A lot of these CEOs that we want to connect with, they do not have time for the hi, how are you, and small talks and brief salutations. So I would say going straight to the point is a key etiquette. Um, and as we've already elaborated on, refrain from you know saying things that are very inappropriate. Just go straight to the point, be direct, and be very respectful, um, polite, and friendly as well. So I would say the key thing that I mentioned earlier on is have a, a, a positive, strong online presence and ensure that your, your message that you're trying to send to an individual through your inbox is direct, it's solid, and it's straight to the point. Okay, so I get from you that, um, you know, a lot of us started off by not even having DPs or profile pictures, you know, trying to hide from the whole world and be in stealth mode and all that. It's a no-no. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Okay, so um, we should be wrapping up in the next five minutes. Um, we will we'll be going to... The DP, mm -hmm. If you want don't put a profile picture at the end of this is something I tell people every time I go for um, speaking engagements and speaking on social media and so on social media is not for everybody we know that um, networking on social media is not for everybody but if you really have a goal in mind to have effective professional connections to have a strong network it is expedient that the DP that you might want to shy away from, you have to place it there. You will be shocked, but I, <laughs> a lot of people now see me on social media like, oh my gosh, you're everywhere. I only started actively posting on social media last year. If you go on my Instagram page, you see that my first picture was November, 2020. That was my first, the first time I created an Instagram account for myself. When I tell people that you're like, you're a lion. And I said, yes, I did not like being all around on social media, the whole pictures, the whole speaking. I did not like it. But so then, what's changed? I listened to a podcast and I hope I could remember okay. this guy's name. I am literally doing a quick research right now. Yes, Gary V. I listened to a podcast okay. from Gary V that changed my entire life and it changed my whole outlook on, on, on how social media works, even in a professional aspect. I realized that if I wanted to achieve what I need to achieve, it would require some discomfort. Nobody gets successful by just being comfortable. And for me, part of that discomfort was having to put myself out there although I didn't want to. So I said, if you want to get speaking engagements, become a public speaker, become a leader, become A, B, C, D, and X, Y, Z, it will require that you put yourself out there. And I had to adjust with that. It, it was very difficult. When I tell people I did not want to post on social media, they look at me now and they're like, you're, 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 you're kidding, right? No, that was me. I was that person who did not want my DP anywhere, just wanted to be in my little corner. But then I had a goal, I had a vision. And in order to achieve that dream, I had to alter certain things that um, were of my discomfort to help me to achieve that. So I would say that uh, being uncomfortable can really help you to, to achieve some level of success. Okay, so with just a couple of minutes to wrap up, um, Mr. Kwesi Kumsen has a question, his hand is up. Let's pull him up, Mr. Kumsen. Mr. Kumsen, if you can hear me. Okay, so while he's coming on, uh, let's have uh, some so good remarks. Um, okay, good evening. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yeah. We can hear you uh, loud and clear. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, great. Uh, Mame and Jean, great presentations there, great ideas. 
being put out there and I'm enjoying myself. Uh, quick one, I want to network with somebody. Uh, somebody. The network is a bit CEO or um, person doing some big business somewhere. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you're yeah, 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 on now, you can hear you. Okay. So, what I'm saying is that I want to connect with this CEO as my career sponsor or mentor. Um, what is the best way to approach it? to build that trust, to get to a point where this person can say, oh, there's this position here, I trust this person, you can fail. Let me network you, let me connect you. To this How can I approach the person and grow this relationship to that point? Great, great, mommy. Can I, yeah. One of the best ways, and I'm gonna, I don't wanna sound churchy, but one of the best ways and, and from what I'm hearing in your question, Kwesi Kumsen, your goal is to want that CEO to refer you for a position. Am I right? From your, the question you posed. Great. Awesome. Great, great. And, and, and that's okay if you have that goal, but one of the key things is to serve. Serve that CEO. How do you serve that CEO? If there is anything that you can do, graphic designing, any or anything, any skill that you have that you believe could be an asset, because when CEOs get to that point, what you're looking for is how can you be of value to me? So the first question you should ask yourself is how am I being of value to the CEO? Because when they realize your value and your assets, that's when they can trust that, you know what, he has been an asset to me. I can trust him that when I refer him to this social and so organization, he will be the best fit for it. And I'm just giving you an answer based on the question you posed. Um, I know we've spoken about relationship building and so on, but it appears that you have an ideal goal in mind. But besides the whole relationship building, because mind you, CEOs know that. They can detect that people just want to be around them. People just want to be mentees because they want a job. So how can you not just portray yourself as someone who wants to use the CEO to get a job? Something has to give. You have to serve. And by service, as I stated earlier on, what skill do you have that you think that you can provide for that CEO? So you have to do some sort of reflection on yourself and say, okay. And, and also, just to end it off so that Jean can, can answer that, what sometimes I do is I can either go on your social media profile or listen to an audio that they did and pick up a gap that they have. Because these people, they always need help. What is the gap? So for example, if I heard the CEO talking about A, B, C, D, I jot it down. I go to them and I said, oh, during your discussion, I heard that you said A, B, C, D. I could help you with that. Is that okay? Everybody loves people who will help them. So I would say that be, be observant of them and serve because service would take you places that your own qualification will not take you. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think there's um, when you're when you're looking for jobs, and I was speaking at something during the week, and I used an acronym called PI, and it's performance exposure. Sorry, performance image and exposure. And a lot of people, when they're going for jobs, they think that if they work really really hard, they'll get the job, they'll get that promotion. But actually, statistically, it's only the performance only represents 10%. The other 90% is made up of 30% about your image. And that's back to Mami's point around personal branding. You've got to understand your personal brand, which starts with knowing yourself, your mission, your beliefs, your values, what you stand for, what you're unequivocal about. You need to understand that very clearly and write it down because then you start seeing who aligns with you. You need to understand how you project yourself out to the world. And you know whether it's your LinkedIn profile, your social media, when you're reframing it, you have to reframe it from the point of view of, what do I want people to know about me? 
what do they need to know in order to help me or in order to refer me? So you're writing everything and communicating everything from a point of what do I want people to know about me in order for me to reach my goals? And the, the, the third part of that is exposure. And that is 60% of getting jobs is your exposure. And it is absolutely 100% about serving. It's about adding value. And that is that comes back down to this mindset that you have. It's like, how am I going to add value and serve this person and add something good to their world? But the exposure part happens because you're networking, because you're connecting with people. And if you want to get to that CEO, it might mean that you need to find out who he's connected to and build relationships before you can get to him so that that person can confidently introduce you to the CEO in order for a position to in order for you to, to continue that conversation. So there's different ways of doing it, but you have to really look at what is your personal brand? What are you communicating out? And how are you exposing yourself to build up your credibility in your support? Okay, so um, Mr. Coombson, I hope your question has been answered. Brilliant, I love the information giving me uh, the service key, the branding, everything I, I, I think spot on. Great, great. Okay, so um, we want to say thank you to everyone who has been part of it. Uh, let's have our closing words, final words. Um, let me start with Jean. Oh, just um, thank you to everybody who's come on board this evening. Mame, is lovely to virtually meet you. So we're here from Canada to Ireland to Ghana this evening. So I think that's that shows global and networking at its best, that Zoom is a wonderful platform, which means we can connect from wherever and with whomever. So there are no boundaries today, which I think is fantastic. So thank you to everybody. I put my LinkedIn details in the chat. So if you'd like to connect, connect please do. And if I can ever help, please do reach out and ask. So delighted to be here. So thank you, Harold, for, for facilitating the, the session this evening. Such a pleasure having you. Mami, let's have your final words. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted, just like Jean said, once again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very grateful to have been here and I'm humbled as well. I just want to leave with the final words that networking once again is communicating your need effectively. What is it that you need? What is that gap that you're seeking for? Um, I'm sure that with, with that in mind, it will help you to um, effectively not only figure out what you need, but also know the right people to network with. And I feel like that's a different um, um, room altogether where you don't just network with anybody. You know, there's some key people that you need to ensure that, you know, you network with because they say your network is your net worth so um bear that in mind and it's really really true um there's something that harold did that i i feel like it ties in with with this perfectly and i like to close that off and i was talking with harold yesterday and i told him i said harold i'm so sorry that i did not respond to your your messages harold messaged me on clubhouse emailed me i mean he was everywhere mommy i need to get you on the show and i was just like who is this guy that just would not let me be and want me to be on the juxtapose and i think that alone there is the perseverance and networking that we're talking about because he persevered mm -hmm. he didn't although i didn't know so did it right no 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 i think it was great if you overdid it i will not be here today okay <laughs> so he did great and that perseverance is what made me even come here today so it's very important to persevere um and and go for what you want the sky is your limit i'll leave you with a final quote my favorite quote from muhammad ali that says if your mind can conceive it and your heart can believe it you can achieve it thank you so much Thank you very much. I also want to end with these two things about the fear you spoke about. Uh, you said, forget everything and run, and face everything and rise. And Jean added that false expectation appearing real. Do not be afraid. Just swipe. Just swipe. Here at Juxtapose, we say, are you the elephant in your room? Are you the one stopping yourself from achieving your success? 
Mami said, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali said, um, if your mind can conceive it, your heart, if your heart can conceive, right? If your or mind can mind. conceive and your heart uh -huh. can believe, believe, you can achieve. That's right. You can achieve. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for making this evening such a success. Um, the transcripts of this uh, recording will be on um, Facebook and YouTube. We'll, we'll, we'll share the links very soon. Feel free to connect with all of us and um, let's, let's keep networking. Bless you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.